Hey guys, so interesting enough, Rudy made a recent video about Rudy versus pretty much local small game stores that are upset that he's disclosing information. Now I kind of can understand the local game store side, so I'll explain that a little bit better. So let's assume that you go to a mom and pop hardware store and you are asking for advice and the owner tells you what screwdriver you need or what um, screw that you need and then you go and buy it and then you find that it's four dollars now you go on your phone and say hey amazon has it for a dollar why don't you sell it to me for a dollar and the owner now gets upset and kicks you out of the store uh, this is something that's happening all across america we used to have window shopping before the internet it would be people who didn't go into the store because they couldn't afford to buy it they would just look at it through a window uh, now we have people who go into the store test it see if they like it ask all type of questions and then don't buy it and buy it online so nothing against Rudy's model because Rudy's model is the advancement of Magic the Game. The average Magic player will be very casual and therefore they are going to look for the best deal possible. And that best deal is clearly, clearly not on your local game store. Your local game store will not be the cheapest. It will never be the cheapest. And it will always be outbid by someone online just like Rudy. Now, Rudy has a store. I don't want to get into the nitty, nitty picky of it. Um, but his store is not does not run FMs. His store, to my knowledge, does not have a single employee other than himself. And that is the model of a store that I have copied as well because it makes the most sense. It is expensive to run a Friday Night Magic. You need to hire an employee to be there. You need to have electricity. You need to have heat. You need to have a, a facility essentially opened. And when you're looking for a lease, at least my lease says that we have to close by midnight. So we couldn't even do a pre-release even if we wanted to. We are on the main street of Humble and it closes. Um, and beyond that, I haven't, we stay until seven is the latest we've ever stayed. But at nighttime, there's two bars near where we are. It can get a little rowdy. So I don't think you even want to be there past 10, given its location. Uh, there's actually, there's a pub that I really enjoy. And then there's like a more shady bar down the road. So why risk that why have uh, fnm why hire more employees than you need to the answer is you shouldn't and economically the local game store model of past of the past years cannot exist in the competitive model of today when you look at tours of us i grew up with a game store i grew up with uh, toys r us and it would always be a really good time but toys r us is not cheap I remember going when, quote, it was going bankrupt and the things were still more expensive than you can buy on Amazon. The Toys R Us will never be cheaper than what you can find online. Your local game store will never be cheaper than what you can find online. So in defense of the local game store, you have to understand from their point of view, they are providing something that online cannot and it is an, a place to play magic and meet people and grow the community. However, that's going to change. Uh, it's going to change for many reasons. MTG Arena is one of them. The other reason is um, everyone is about expected value now. When I grew up playing Magic, no one even knew what cards were rare or uncommon or common. You just took your best guess. There was no uh, gold symbol, silver. Like At most, you had an Inquest magazine that was five months old and the prices were so just random it's like a person guessed at what the price was i remember reading an article in quest that said 20 dollars for a black lotus was highway robbery and it was about a mccadian mass card about like a highway robber or something 
Regardless, Rudy represents, uh, he does represent a danger, and I know he does minimize it a little bit in his videos, but he represents the evolution of gaming. And the evolution of gaming uh, is not to have a play area. Let me repeat that again. It's not to have a play area. Providing a place for people to play, not only is it expensive in terms of employee, not only is are you liable should someone get injured and you probably need business liability and not only do you have to have different rent you can't you have to put that in the lease uh, my lease says that past midnight no one's supposed to be at the office and my lease says that during the holidays no one's supposed to be there and then sundays it's only a half day it's a very interesting lease but uh, the model, for my model is you order online and then you pick up the cards in person, almost like a Wendy's. Like instead of being able to sit at the Wendy's, it would be like a almost a drive-thru. But obviously you could come in and you're not driving your car. It's not There's no pickup window. But that has been a successful business model. We sell DVDs, Blu-rays, um, pluses, anime figures, and the person studies it reads it online, and then makes the pickup. And that has been a great business model for us. So when I was looking to start my magic company, I looked at the Rudy model when he was doing his card shop life. And it became very apparent that he's using the store not to host events or maybe he used the store to buy collections. And I don't even use that because I never have any cash in the store. The store is used to be a dentist's office, so you have the front desk, and the front desk, we put our secretary there, and our secretary's main job is to just sell magic cards, pick up the phone, and for the marketing company, all that. But in the future, to have a store, uh, my friend owns a very large store, DNA Comics, and he loses money every time. He loses money in magic. He no longer carries magic. He no longer does pre-release. He no longer does Friday Night Magic because it doesn't make him money. It costs too much money to operate these things. And obviously the other concern is stolen goods. Um, when, you, when you have a large amount of people who you, you don't know, who you have never seen, who may be out of state, who you may never see again, and you put them in a store and the employee is busy with the tournament or whatever the employee is doing, maybe napping, then you do have a large opportunity for people to steal stuff because there's just too much activity, especially at pre-release. Now, you can mitigate this with cameras and all that stuff, but at the end of the day, if someone's from out of state, they're not going to care. They're not a local anyway. So I've seen this uh, personally at Groovy Geckos and at DNA Comics and at other stores where you have an event and things go missing. So back to my original assessment of the local game store. I think it's going to die. I think all of them are going to either have to evolve or they're going to change. Now, there is a second evolution that I've seen where it's a very tiny store. And the tiny store can have FNM and pre-releases because they fit a lot of people in a small area. So it's not that big of a deal for electricity, air conditioning, heating, or even the space issue because the location is more fitting of a local game store than perhaps my store, which is located on the main street, uh, the main street, uh, the original street next to the museum. So one of the things that I want to say is it is interesting when Rudy does, makes a video of local game stores wanting to ban him. That's not going to happen. I'm pretty sure he knows that's not going to happen because he makes the distributor more money than them combined. He buys more from them combined at what I assume is a lower rate. If you buy higher, it's the same with my distributor. If I buy, uh, I, I'm buying $900 of Pokemon cards a week. By guaranteeing that amount, and if even if I don't sell that much, I still eat that amount. And it's okay because it's nice owning a hobby store, right? If you look at my other channel, we it's just an infinite amount of Pokemon cards. Even if I 
started opening Pokemon cards and I opened, let's say, a thousand packs a day, I wouldn't finish. It would because I would be restocked all the time. So I get it. Um, I get it. It makes a lot of sense to me. But also, it is sad as someone who grew up with a local game store to see my local game store that I went from when I came to Houston and Humble five, six years ago, having 120 plus people at the pre release, having FMs that are 40, 50, 60 people. Occasionally, even a female magic player would be at the FNM. Uh, DNA Comics now doesn't even do magic because it's not worth the employee to even be there. It's not worth the employee who gets paid minimal wage to even be there for the FNM because it's not, it doesn't make money. But that's where we are. When the majority of players buy stuff online for the cheapest price possible, your st- local game store cannot compete. And they will eventually go extinct or change their business model into not doing FMs like my store and Rudy's store doesn't do that. They're not W. We're not WPNs, or having like the prime location. Like you would have to have the ideal location that would allow you to do it. Anyway, that is it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. (laughs) Bye, guys.